Okay, I had a student ask questions on how to do this problem. It's from Module 7, Homework Chapter 9, for those of you in my class. Um, so I went ahead and took this original, this part right here, and I, I pasted it into, pasted it into, uh, into Excel. And, and this problem comes from, from this program. It's called a CEPI. So if you're a professor and you want a program that teaches finance for Excel, uh, this is a really good program to, to get students to use Excel. So anyway, um, let me just get right into this problem now. It asks you to download some prices from from uh, from Yahoo Finance, and uh, it also asks you to later on to download some prices from from the S and P 500, which this is the ticker for S and P 500. And on, on Yahoo Finance. So um, normally if I'm going to download more than one stock, and I notice that actually Yahoo Finance is kind of tricky because it can't, doesn't let you download prices anymore for S&P 500. So I would suggest going to this website right here. So I'm going to highlight this website and go out to the internet and paste this in. And it comes up with this. And... Um, and this is a really good website. Jason Strimple wrote it. And you can actually make a have a CSV file with a lot of tickers. I actually download the entire S&P 500 historical data for the, all, the, all the stocks in the S&P 500. And I was able to do it for me. Instead of going one by one on Yahoo Finance. So I, I would suggest using that for this problem. And remember our stocks are BAC, PJ, P&G, and the S&P 500 for this problem. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to go BAC, PG, and uh, so these are the stocks that I want to download. BAC, PG, and then S&P 500 I showed you earlier. And it says in the problem to do it from uh, uh, January 4th, 2010. I'm going to go January 4th, 2010. Through uh, January, uh, well, I think it was 2014. I think it was January 2nd, but we'll go to the 3rd just to make sure we get the 2nd. Sometimes you got to go an extra day. I think in this case we had to go to an extra day. So it's asking us through the 2nd. We're going to go an extra day just to get the, get the, get the 2nd. And we're going to leave everything the same. Uh... And let's go ahead and get series. And, and it says it download it got them all successfully. It says it got 107 observations. And we're going to go ahead and download the file. And here it is. And let me just go ahead and get this data and copy it into our problem. I'll just put it down here in the bottom. And now we have all our dates and our and our prices. And sure enough it only goes to it only goes to the second. Even though I went to the third, it got the second. And uh so the first thing it asks you is uh, let me get so I can get rid of this. And I can get rid of this. And so the first thing it asks you is uh, it asks you how many observations. And we observed there was 107 observations, so we're good there. And the second thing, also by the way, if you if you don't if you you could actually go here and go equals count. And then highlight these numbers. Hold down shift and then end and then the down arrow. Enter. And it counts them for you, right? So, that, that's, so that's part A. Um, I'm going to put that up here. And 
And then the next thing it wants to returns. So when you do returns, you lose a day. So, um, so I'm going to go here and we go equals this and copy it across. And we'll call these returns. And let me just merge and center this so you can see. All right. So this first one is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be the, the ending day divided by the starting day minus one. And we can go ahead and format this percent and take it out like three places. Copy it across, send it down. Okay. So now we have the daily returns. Um, and then let's go back to the problem. So what's the daily return uh, for... Oh, it tells you to do this and I ask you what the daily return is for Procter & Gamble for the last day that we have some observations. And we have a point a negative point uh, 106. That would probably be close enough. Sometimes these numbers are off a little bit. Let's see, this shows... Hold on. Okay, so I had to check real quick. These numbers are a little bit different, but the answer is the same. Uh, so they had uh, 16.1 and the return is 0 0.34. So on, I got uh, uh, this is zero. This is actually if you point th put 3.4 percent, that's the same thing as 0 0.034, and it takes 3.4 percent. So if you let's take all these and take them just to one percentage place because that's what it's asking for and uh, so if you put 3.4 percent it'll take it okay and then that'll be correct and then for the next one if you point put uh 1.06 percent negative 1.06 percent it'll take it and you can see that that's let's see well they did no, well, that one probably 3.1.1, 1 1.07%, 1.06%. And then, so if you can put percent, it'll still take it as an answer. Okay. And then, uh, so then uh, it wants, so the next thing it wants us to do, I know I'm going kind of fast, but I'm trying to keep this video short. Next thing it wants to find the, the slope between, it wants to use the market model and find the slope here. Um, so, uh, that's pretty easy to do. I'm going to go back up to the top. So, um, if I want the, the, the slope actually is, we can call it beta because that's actually beta. So I'm going to go equal slope and it asks for the known Y's. And for the first one, it's asking for, uh, the beta for BAC. So, so BAC is first you're going to put these in. This is your Y's. And then comma. And then for your X's, you're going to put in the market, the market returns. And you're going to get a slope of 1.79. And uh, that's the answer they get there. Okay. Even though the numbers are different, it still comes out. And then Procter and Gamble is 0.5, and you can do the same thing here. Uh, so this is a BAC for Procter and Gamble. Oop, Procter and Gamble. It's going to be equal to slope. Known Ys are going to be Procter and Gamble's returns, and known Xs again are going to be the market returns. And you're going to get a 0.5 that rounds to 0.5 which is what we had here 0.5 okay um another way you can actually you can actually see the see what they're talking about here so if i um uh, i have to have x if i want to plot this i want to have x on the left and then i want to have uh my y on the right 
So if I copy this down, make that percent. If I uh, highlight this, and then I'm going to scroll back to the top because I don't want a graph on the bottom. And I go insert charts, scatter charts. I get a chart of all, I get a scatter plot of all these points, right? And I can click on one of these. And if I right click and go add trend line, and I'm going to go over here to the right and display equation on the chart and display R squared on the chart, it's going to show the same, it's going to show beta right here as a slope. Okay. And this is basically what it's doing. It's trying to find the line that fits those points and gets the slope. Right. So that's the answer to those. Like I told you, this rounds to 0.5, right? And this rounds to 1.79. Okay. So it's pretty easy. The use, Using this makes it a lot easier. And it should come out right. Even though the numbers are slightly different. Adjusted close is very different because it makes adjustments. Uh, over time, but uh, it still comes out you get the right answer. So hopefully that helps uh, If you like this video and you want to see more of my videos and you want to subscribe my picture will come up here go ahead and click on my picture um, Thanks for watching. Bye